Hi there, guys. Mr. Martin here again. Thanks so, so much for joining me. Now, this little video is going to be the first in our series of revision videos. So we're going to start with memory. And what we're going to look at here are the specific outcomes. That's all the knowledge you should have going into the exam. The skills you should be able to use going into the exam again. And we're going to look at a few specimen questions about this. So we'll have a look at the questions themselves. We'll break them down and we'll have a look at maybe how we can go about answering them. So let's start with outcomes then. What should you have learned? First things first is you need to familiarise yourself with the nature of memory. So that includes the basic, absolute basic fundamentals of it. So the short term memory and any studies that kind of explain that. So encoding or duration and capacity. Same thing for the long term memory and then other memory systems as well. So if you familiarise yourself with things like forgetting and various other things, then you're off to a really, really good start. The second thing is the different approaches to understanding memory. So we've looked primarily at the biological, the cognitive and the psychodynamic approaches. But if you've researched anything else, well, more is the better. Third thing then is we have to familiarise with two theories of memory and where better to start than with the memory models. So you should familiarise yourself with the multi-store model of memory, that's Atkinson and Schifrin, and also the working memory model as well, that's Badley and Hitch, 1974. Next thing then is an application of memory. Now there's quite a lot of these, we could maybe focus on revision techniques, but I want you guys to focus on how the psychology of memory can be applied to eyewitness testimony. I think that's probably the easiest to understand area and something you can write a huge amount about. Those outcomes there are what you should have in your head going into the exam. In terms of skills then, what kind of things should we be able to do in the exam? Well, you should be able to distinguish between different types of memory. Now, that could mean short term and long term, or it could be a little bit more focusing on the long term. It could be things like declarative memory, uh, memory sorry, um, semantic memory, procedural, all those kind of things. You should be able to do that. Second thing is you should be able to use the different approaches to explain memory. So how do we approach things biologically to explain memory? And how does that compare and contrast, for example, to the cognitive model? You should be able and very comfortable to do that. Third thing you should be able to do is identify how concepts and memory are applied to the real world. Again, this should be focusing mainly on eyewitness testimony. If you've got any other things there, more is the better. Fourth thing, we should be able to evaluate models of memory. Most psychology candidates lose a massive amount of marks because they don't bother to evaluate things. Evaluation is a critical part of psychology. Sure, we need to understand what these psychology studies are telling us, but we also need to understand if we can trust that research. So the more evaluation we do, the better. And finally, we should be able to use research evidence to back up these factual statements and our evaluative points. So if we're saying something uh, along the lines of Loftus and Palmer, we can say that, yeah, I mean, they say one thing, but Ewell and Cutsall point out something completely different. So this is how we back up our factual statements and our evaluation as well. Let's have a look at some specimen exam questions. Now, remember, because this is our optional topic, the actual questions, if you get one in the exam, will be very, very vague and very, very general. This is a good and a bad thing. It's good because you can write about pretty much anything. It's also bad, however, because you don't really know how much to cover or what detail to go into. But let's try and break these down. We'll start off with a 10 marker. This question could be something like, choose a topic in individual behavior other than sleep dreams and sleep disorders. Well, the only other one we've done, of course, is memory. Explain how this topic can be applied to the real world. Now, you might get maybe four, maybe five marks if you explain things like revision strategies and that kind of thing. The real 10 marker essays here are going to be about, of course, eyewitness testimony. So what are we going to focus on in this essay? It's only 10 marks long. It's not massive. So we're going to focus primarily on Loftus and Palmer's study, how eyewitness testimony can be changed and corrupted. What factors were there in eyewitness testimony? What makes it go up and what makes it go down? Think about um, change blindness, or we can maybe think about social pressure. Finally, we want to explain 
realistically, how this can be applied to the real world. So what changes to the legal system have we got now based on Loftus and Palmer's research? Remember, that's about cognitive interview. It's also about looking at other types of evidence as well as eyewitness testimony. Remember throughout this, remember your evaluation. You must put in one or two points of evaluation here. Otherwise, you cannot get the full 10 marks. Let's look at a slightly longer question now. This is a 16 marker. This would be an absolute beast to write in the exam. We're talking a couple of pages, maybe three, four pages or so. Explain a topic in individual behavior other than sleep dreams and sleep disorders, referring to at least two approaches. Well, key into this word here, explain. Explain means basically everything you know. Impress me. Tell me everything you can remember about one approach, then another. And if you've got time, fire a third in there as well. Cover all your bases. See where you get to. So an example paragraph structure could look something like this. We can start off with perhaps what topic are we going to use and define it. The examiner needs to know. So this essay is going to look into the topic of memory. Don't assume that your examiner knows everything about psychology. Far better to assume that they know nothing about psychology. So define it. What is memory? Paragraph two, key details about approach number one. For this, choose cognitive, biological and or psychodynamic. We're aiming for three key facts. So let's think about the cognitive approach. We can focus in on the different models of memory. We can focus in on all the different studies that have been done. Remember to link the approach to the topic clearly. It's not enough to just explain in general terms what a cognitive approach is, although that might be credited, but you must explain it in terms of memory. So the cognitive approach views the mind as a computer. We can view short-term memory as a processor. That would be linking the approach to the topic clearly. Paragraph three, key research in that approach. One study in detail or a few studies in less detail. Think about Conrad, Badley, Miller, Peterson and Peterson. Think about all those different studies that you can write just a tiny little bit amount, uh, a tiny little amount um, uh, in your essay about. Uh, the more you fire in there, the more you're going to impress me, the more marks you're going to get. Paragraph four, approach number two. And then paragraph five, key research in that approach. Exactly the same as paragraphs two and three. Think about biological, think about Clive Wearing, think about neurosyphilis, all the different things you can think of there. Another good one in paragraph five would be maybe Scoville and Milner. Remember HM who had part of his brain removed and then couldn't focus on new long-term memories. Paragraph six, conclusion. It's not necessary to put a conclusion down. This isn't an English essay after all. We're not marking you down for style, but it is kind of expected. If you put a wee conclusion at the end, you're gonna get a few, maybe, and maybe an extra mark or so. If you are putting it in though, keep it very short. Just very briefly define what it is you've spoken about and come to some kind of general and a pithy conclusion at the end. That'd be good. 16 marks, easy peasy, right? Last one, 12 marker this time, somewhere in between. Discuss two theories relating to your chosen optional topic in individual behavior. Two theories. Now, very unwise here if you were thinking, looking at this, thinking, oh, I can talk about schema theory. You don't know enough about it. Certainly not for 12 marks. What you do know massive amounts about here are the two models of memory. These are your key theories here. Multi-store and working memory model. If you can't write six marks on each of these, to be honest, you don't deserve to be in my psychology class. So, paragraph structure. Number one, remember a brief outline of what you're going to talk about. Don't assume that I know what a memory model is. I don't. Tell me what it is. It's a framework for explaining how memory works. Paragraph two, multi-store. What it is, who invented it. Remember that's Atkinson and Schifrin, 1968. The structure, you could even draw a little diagram there. Some evidence for that. So thinking about all the different ways we know the multi-store model is perhaps accurate. Paragraph three, evaluation. You won't get nearly full marks if we don't evaluate it. So yeah, multi-store does account for a massive amount of memory, but ultimately it's very simplistic, isn't it? Good. Paragraph four, same thing again, but this time for the working memory model. What is it? Who came up with it? That's Badley and Hitch, 1974. What does it look like? Draw a wee diagram and then give me some evidence about where it comes from as well. So we're thinking dual task techniques this time. 
Paragraph five, remember, we must evaluate. So yeah, the working memory model accounts for lots of different memories than the multi-store does, but have we really explained anything at all, especially that central executive? What is it? Do we have any evidence that it exists? Lots of things you can mention. Paragraph six, remember, not necessary to put a conclusion in, but pretty good style if you do. And if you do, keep it brief. We didn't want you spending all your time on this. Remember, you've got another four essays to write after this as well. These are very, very brief outlines, but remember your topic, your question, if you get it on memory, is gonna be very, very vague. You make it fit. You impress me. You fire down everything you can remember about that topic. Try and keep it in the time limit though, because ultimately you've only got half an hour for this. So get down as much as you can on that page. Impress me with your evidence. Tell me everything there is to know about memory. Fingers crossed guys that your memory is good enough for this exam. Cheers.